<laughs> All right, we're back. Um, uh, it's Comp 3025, Mobile and Pervasive Computing in the Winter of 2016, s Semester uh, Week 1, Lesson 1, Part 2. Actually, it says Part 1, but I made a mistake. It's Part 2, um, and it'll record multiple versions of Part 1, and then I'll just modify it later. Um, so we talked about kind of our plan in the last video. So if you want to look at the last video, if you forgot the plan or you want to know what, what's happening, um, you can certainly look at video one for that. <clears throat> I want to get into this, this stuff. And again, I have a, a con, um, kind of a condensed version of, of chapter one in my PowerPoint presentation that I put up on Blackboard for you if you want to follow along. Um, the one thing I want to do is, I'm, so I'm going to hit this, this uh, PowerPoint. I'm not going to read every slide, obviously. Right? We're going to kind of use it as a backdrop, and there might be a little bit of stuff, instructions for us to follow when we put together our first little simple app. But I think the first thing I want you to do with this is let's do a little bit of playing around with the environment. So let's bring up Xcode for a second. I think this is the, the first piece that I'd ask you to do. So here's Xcode, if you don't have it up already. Notice that um, in Xcode, as soon as you bring it up, this little um, <clears throat> quick menu comes up to launch your stuff. Um, you could do it two ways. You could start off with a new project here, create a new project in Xcode. You can certainly do that here. And you can also do it through your menu. So if you notice, once you bring up Xcode on the, on the Mac, you always have this menu that's detached from the application, like this, right? So here, if you notice, if I go File, New, and if I go Project, that's what you could do from there. And you can also do it from here, right? So that's how you start off your project. So let's start off a new project. We're going to call this, you know, kind of an example project for us. When, when it comes up, you're going to see this menu of stuff. Depending on how you, which version of Xcode you have, you have different options. Now, the version I've loaded or installed for you in your VM should give you all the same options that I have. One thing I didn't do in your VM is download and install um, your documentation right? that's built into Xcode. And there's a reason for that, because it's another couple gigs, and I was kind of space limited. So you can certainly do it now if you wanted to load in your, app, your documentation later on, but it is an extra couple gigs. Uh, of stuff to, to load up when we, and I'll, I'll show you where that is um, as we go. So there's different options, different templates that you start off with uh, on iOS. And notice that you can do an iOS application, you can do a framework or, a framework or library, um, obviously watchOS and tvOS and, and uh, OSX uh, native are here as well, if you want to do an OSX application. And there's different templates that start off, right? So we're going to start off with an iOS application, obviously, and we're going to go with a single view application. Um, that's the first one we're going to create here together just to play around and also we're going to follow the book. All right. So let's do that. So let's create a little iOS app. I'm going to click next. Your product name. So we're going to make this an example app or demo app. Right. So if I was to call this um, comp 3025, let's do this for the first time. And I'm going to call this demo. Notice how my bundle identifier changes. Now I'm using my company name, com.acrotech as an example, right? But let's use, um, for here, we can use com.georgian college. And that's what I would ask you to do when we're here. So here's Georgian college, right? It's reverse domain namespacing is what we use when we create Android applications and iOS applications, right? Um, because what this does is it creates a unique bundle identifier for the App Store, right? So um, as long as no one else takes your company name, whatever it is, then if you create an application like Comp 3025 Demo, and if it was a unique company name, it would be a unique product for the App Store. That's how they, that's how they, they separate it. OK, um, language is Swift. You could also choose Objective-C when you make iPhone or iOS devices, still, if you wanted to do that. Um, and typically, we, we can program. If I, press, if, if I select Universal here, then um, that means I can, um, when I write this app, it'll work both on iPhone and iPad. Right? That's what it means. Or, Actually, it could also work for t uh, uh, theoretically for tvOS as well, um, if you wanted to go there, because you can convert it. For now, we're going to build, in this course, all of our stuff we're going to make is for iPhone. And the reason for that is it's going to reduce some of the, the overhead in terms of what we're going to be doing. If we were to make universal apps, it comes with a diff uh, kind of a different layout inside of our Xcode, uh, in, in Xcode. So click iPhone. We're not going to be focusing on unit tests or core data, or I, uh, UI tests. So we're going to unclick these. So if they're clicked, unclick them. Uncheck them. OK, and click Next. They're unchecked by default. There you go. Um, and so now it's going to ask you where to put your stuff. I've got a, a kind of an Xcode uh, projects folder on my desktop, and that's where I'm going to save everything. Um, and I'm just going to click uh, kind of, you know, kind of continue on the bottom. And of course, my little toolbar took off the cut off the bottom of my screen. For now, what I'm going to do just to make it a little easier is I'm going to undock 
I'm going to hide my dock, in, my dock on the bottom so I can see the, so it kind of gives me a little bit more room. All right, so when you first kick off uh, with Xcode, one, thing's, one thing to notice is your screen, and it's kind of weird. It's like, if you've never used Visual Studio before, you don't know where everything is, right? So from an orientation perspective, and it actually says this in the PowerPoints, if you actually look at the PowerPoints, um, you can see that each, there's different panes for different things, right? For example, this is our project pane, and in our project pane, you're going to have a list of your projects. Things to note, what you see here in your project pane for your files may not match what's on the actual operating system. So because what um, Xcode does is it uses metadata to kind of, um, you know, kind of decorate your, uh, your project a little bit to make it easier for you to manage. An example of this would be any blue folder that you see on, uh, on Xcode. Um, you'll notice that those are hard-coded folders that probably will appear in your, in your operating system. And the yellow folders, anything you see in yellow, are just group folders, right, that are used for um, organizational purposes, right? So if I want to organize my app delegate and my view controller, as an example, if I want to organize those two in, a, in their own group, I mean, I could certainly create a group here uh, to organize these within. So if I kind of select those two things, and as an example, and I can create new group, right? And I can say new group from selection, which is what I want to do, right? I can do that and I can say, well, I'm going to call this, you know, my group. I can call it whatever group I want. You can group your stuff up like this, right? And notice how both app delegate and view controller is here, but it won't affect the way your application runs, right? It's not like you're putting them in an actual physical folder, so it won't mess up your pathing or anything like that. It's simply for you to organize. So let's say, for example, I'm using, I'm, I'm, whole, I'm using the whole model view controller um, methodology, the, that design pattern that we use for most devices now and most, um, um, I would say, you know, in our development practice, model view controller. Maybe I want to have all my controllers in a group, right? It's not a separate folder, but I can hide or collapse those groups. So I can say all my controllers in one group, all my, my view, uh, my, 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 my models and stuff in another group and so on. And I can kind of partition it that way. Now, what if I want to take stuff out of the group? What do I do? Well, I can actually take these two uh, folders or these two actual files, .swift, and I can just pull them out. And now my group is empty. Right, so all I've done is pull them out here, and I can delete my group, not a problem. Right, so my group is gone. Right, so things to note in your, on, on the left-hand side here. Other things to note. If I click on any one of these, again, this is your project window. In the middle, this is your editor window. And over here, this is your inspector on the, on the right, right? Depending on what you're clicking on, and again, there's these two buttons on the right-hand side here. And there's also these other tabs on the top here on your, on your project window. Depending on what you click on, you get a different set of, it's context sensitive to what you see on the right hand side in your inspector, right? So an example is I've got, I'm clicked on app delegate.swift. And I'm here, I've also got this checked right here. This, this is the tab that I'm in. I'm in the project navigator. If you hover over, that's what it is, right? And over here in the inspector, there's two uh, folders. One of them is the file inspector and the other one is kind of our quick help. Remember I told you there's no quick help because I haven't downloaded your help files, right? Uh, from, a, from a space perspective. We'll, I'll show you where to get that um, later on today because this is part of our orientation, okay? But you can also see how, what our path looks like. So here's comp3025 demo, that's our project name. Here's, here's the, our main folder, which is the organizational folder we have, our group, right? Then we're looking at appdelegate.swift, right, as an example, and this is our Swift file. So let's take a look at this for a second, uh, what it gives us right away. You should, you should see, uh, what does it say, student, right here, when you guys log in? Yeah. Right, because that's, that's the name of the account that I made for you guys for this particular virtual machine, student, student, right? There is no login, as an example, for this. But if you're working with your own machine, it would show your name, right? So this is kind of cool. It kind of gives you a little bit of, of this header information right from the get-go. Um, we're importing UIKit here, right? And UIKit is... Um, the SDK that we use to do UIs for, uh, for, app, for uh, iOS apps. If I was going to do something with games, I probably would have uh, also import GameKit and SpriteKit, right, if I was going to do 2D and 3D games, if I was going to do that. So there's other, um, a ton of libraries that Apple's already written for you to, 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 make, to help you write applications. I'll tell you right now that we're probably gonna, not going to touch App Delegate for, for, for this particular day, and not for a while. And the reason for that is because we're not going to touch this too much because it, it, it's the flow of our application. In fact, if anything, 
if we kick off this application for the first time, each of these functions that you see here, these methods, will fire, will trigger upon execution of the application. There's an execution order, right, if you will, or a, a loop, an event loop that happens for all applications, right? So if you look here, the application method, right, is, is got inside of it <coughs> other, other methods that, that it's asking for. For example, here's my application will, re will resign active. <coughs> that's a trigger. That's actually a, a, an event that will trigger, right? Same thing with this one. Application did enter background. When the application enters the background, this event will fire, right? So these are all the application events that are, are basically put out here as stubs that we can override or we can, you know, kind of put our own code in, and they're all required in App Delegate. So the two files that you require for when you create iOS applications from the very first time, hint, hint, this is going to come up on your test next week, is AppDelegate.swift and ViewController.swift. Those are the two files that you're going to see and that you need at a minimum when you create iOS applications. Okay? Those two. So ViewController.swift is where we're do, going to do our work today. Right? Can yeah. Line number a lot? Your number? Line numbering. Oh yeah. Well, you guys don't have line numbers? Nope. Oh, that's terrible. So you're gonna go. Let's try this. Get that done. Thank you for uh, for that, Rich. If you go to preferences, Xcode preferences, right? And if I go to um, <coughs> text editing, right in the middle, and I can I can click on line numbers. Not a problem. All right. So that's something that should have been. Sorry, I forgot to do that. I should have done that by default. Huh? What? You're, you're, are you are you uh, are you saying it's bad? I forgot. Sorry, did my best. Um, yeah, actually, since we're here, since Rich Rich got me to get this, I was going to do this anyway. But let's take a look and see what what's up here for pre for preferences. One is our general preferences, right? So, for example, um, <clears throat> you can assign general preferences to the way that, um, in terms of warnings and so on, you can set that up. Accounts. This is what we're, we're going to work in here a little bit with accounts. And one of them is, if you notice, I've, I'm turned into this Georgian College um, admin account, and I have I'm part of our a team, right? As an example, um, that I use for iOS development, right? Now I'm going to include you because I have developer access for uh, um, uh, for our, our Georgian College thing, right? And I'm I'm going to give you access as agents so you can create iOS apps for this semester, right? Um, <clears throat> and so that your, uh, your ID here in student, and I'm not sure how it's going to affect you. It's one thing we didn't look at because you're not logged in as yourself. I'm not sure if I just have to put in student, you know, or your, or your, uh, if you, have, you have to change this every time when you log in. Because right now, if you notice, my Apple ID is here. So if you don't have an Apple ID, and you're going to need one uh, to sign up as a developer, so please get an Apple ID for yourself. It's free to get. And then I can use that Apple ID. It's usually a, some kind of, um, of email address that I can send your credentials to. Because you're going to have to log in here uh, as an example with your Apple ID. So that's kind of something we have to, th I have to think about that. I don't know how, what does it say there for you when, when you go in there? Is it me? Yeah. Good. No, I don't have one. Good. Yes. Will the uh, license expire? No. So, so, put it on our, uh, so I'll, uh, I'll probably won't touch it again until next time I do the semester. So you have the whole, you pay, pretty much have the whole year. Well, it's going to all go to Georgian College because if you're a Georgian College developer, then it's theoretically it's all for uh, it's all for practice and learning, right? It's a learning account. But you you could deploy Apple applications on on your phone if you have an Apple an, uh, a phone or some kind of an iPad, you could do that. Um, so later on, we'll do this. We'll do this kind of uh, th again. This is a kind of another headache we're going to do on another day. It's going to take almost the whole day to set this up properly. I'll be honest with you. Not the whole three hours, but there's a good portion of time we'll need for that. Okay, so that's that's one. Uh, behaviors is another one. Um, uh, again, what happens when your build starts? Uh, do you want to play a sound? Um, you can customize this. The behaviors here. Navigation again. Um, I'm going to skip that for a second. Fonts and colors is kind of cool. If you want to change the way your fonts look in your editor, you want to change your theme. Like right now, um, I'm kind of in a light theme. You can change your theme in the background to make it look the way you like and so on. If, you're, if you like a dark theme and I see that you've already done that, that's totally cool, but you're going to have to do that every time because it's your, in your virtual machine, if you're okay with that. Um, for me, a white theme is easier for me to teach to, so that's why I use a white theme. I like a dark theme as well, but um, that's just the way it is. Text editing. Um, again, this is where you turn your line numbers and everything else. Uh, key bindings. If you want to make your own key code for uh, for stuff, you can certainly make your own key binding here. 
for different kinds of events. And there's different kinds of things for the menu, for the file menu, to make you know, your own shortcuts. Um, source control. Yeah. Uh, is there a uh, Mac equivalent to Alt-Tab? Alt-Tab. Command-Tab. Um, source control. Here's something. Source control. We're going to be doing source control today. That's one thing we're, I'm going to be doing that's outside of the book. Because you need to know how to make a, um, your own use source control for your, for your stuff. And it's actually really cool. It's built into Xcode. So um, it doesn't take a lot of work for us to, to set up a, a GitHub repository online and then connect to it. So we're going to talk source control. And there's some options here for source control. Um, downloads, remember I talked about some stuff that I didn't download. If you click downloads, you'll see that I have, you should have some kind of simulator. iOS 9.1 is what I have. Hopefully you'll have that too. Um, and, and I have myself, I've, I've included Xcode 7.2 documentation, but I don't think I've included any other documentation for you here. Okay, and that's a problem. So you'd have to click on, you'd have to click on one of these ones. I wonder why they took that off. They, they, they may have taken that off. I would install the simulator. It's going to take some time. Well, have you downloaded it? And hold on a second. What's the password? Should we student, student? What do we click to? Okay. Hold on. Uh, student. Should be student. Okay, student. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> you know, you always get into these hiccups when uh, that's okay. It doesn't work. The password, I, I, I don't know why. I think it's. It's been really weird. But that's okay because I can always give another version of stuff to Rick and then he can fix it, right? So, worst case scenario. Okay, um, so that's a kerfuffle. Um, let's go into location. Um, location is, is uh, from, lo from a location perspective, you can click that in source trees. Again, it, it depends on how you want to get your sources for, uh, for uh, your data when you build your stuff. Notice our, on my command line tools show Xcode 7.2. Um, you can also load up other kind of command line tools as well. It's good that we checked that. Better now than later. How about that? Right. That'd be bad when we come to the class where I actually have my stuff. So if I was going to deploy, notice how I have my deployment up here where it says my, my project up here and then my target is iPhone 6 Plus, 6S Plus. Right? You should have that on the top of your editor as well. If I click the plus button or this, this play button right now on the top, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to build the app. The build's going to succeed. Right, and that's probably where you can stop. It won't actually deploy um, a, um, a simulator. It does? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, great. So then we have no problems. Who cares? Right? And that's what we want. We want the iOS 6s Plus uh, simulator to come up. It'll take some time, guys. So, so it does work. It's just it's locked. I don't care. <laughs> if I don't have to bug him, I don't want to bug him. Right? Yeah, mine's gonna take some time to come up. Well, actually, it's working. Um, this is this is the app, right? It's nothing. It's a blank app, so that's why it's blank, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, well, the reason why it's this big is because it's um, you know it's it's as wide as you want to make it, right? Yeah. So this is my Safari app, and then your app is going to appear here. So you're going to see all your apps like really massive, like this, right? But again, if you go to hardware. Um, if I'm not wrong, you can reduce the size of your uh, um, of your device, make it like a lot smaller. Um, in here, you can change your view for your for simulator. Yeah, yeah. There's your scale. So if I go to scale, and if I go some something, if I scale it down to let's say to 33%, it'll look something like this more reasonable. Right. Yeah. 
right? So, I mean, you have your app. Uh, your, your app. Um, and if you notice, that was my app that I made just now, this, this, uh, this demo app that we made, right? This Comp3025 app right here with no, there's nothing in there, if you notice, right? There's also some other apps here. And if you notice, all we did was we went to window and went to scale and changed it to 33%. Okay, so check this. We do have an app. We don't have a simulator that we can use for sure. That's good. <laughs> okay, now that I've, I've run the simulator, if I want to deploy again to the simulator, I'd have to press this, this play button again. Let's stop the simulator. If I stop uh, the, the, the simulator, it'll, it'll, it'll finish. Right? We want to try and finish the simulator after we've run it. Right? When we click the actual play button, what's really happening is it's, um, it's building, it's compiling and building your code. Right? So if it doesn't compile and build, it's probably because some kind of errors are happening. You've, made, you've done something wrong or you haven't followed along properly. Okay? So that's really the, the, you know, the, the compile and build. So again, on the left, is your project navigator in the middle is your editor and again the second file we're looking at is, is view controller swift let's try a couple things here um, notice how we have in our um, there's a couple of of uh, functions that we can override run one of them is view did load so this is going to trigger this function is going to trigger this method when the view our screen loads for the first time right that's what's going to happen so if I was actually to go in here and put in our first swift command which is going to be print. Whoa. Yeah, I know it's it's heavy duty. Print, and if I if you notice when I when I start top when I start typing Swift right, if I start typing print here, I get all this code hinting coming up right. This code hinting that tells me hey, um, uh, what are you looking for to print? And typically there are um, there's a there's a ton of different overrides here you can choose from. Um, I want to print a string, so I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to say something like, you know, my view did load, right? So I'll, just say, I'll say view did load. So we know that when, the, when this fires, it's good. Notice how in Swift, there are no semicolons. It'll accept them, right? That's the first thing you're going to learn about Swift. Hint, hint, that'll be on your, your uh, test next week, right? No semicolons in Swift, right? Um, if I put a semicolon in here, it's not going to complain, though, eh? If I put a semicolon in, so if you're someone who forgets and you're because we're we're all coming from a C influence background, and you put a semicolon, don't worry, it's not going to like kill you. Eh? It's not like it's not going to run or something. If I was to build this thing again, it'll run just fine. So if you've got a long command, you can put a semicolon in to separate it if you want to. Is there a continuation? Let's say you want to put because I assume it then if you write three lines of code, it interprets them as three separate commands. Correct. Then you can put a semicolon. Want, what, what if you got one really long command? How do you continue? For the semicolon. Then? Yeah, that's when you use a semicolon. It doesn't ask you to use semicolons, but if you, um, it'll be, um, it'll ignore it until it doesn't, if it doesn't recognize that command, because you can do command chaining as well, right? So if it knows that you're, it, did, for, did it freeze? Is that what you said? I think it uh, just take, it, It'll take its time. It'll get there. Just yeah, give it a chance. It's, it's give, it a, give it a chance. You can also do a force, um, a force quit, and we'll talk about that. All right, so here's my print command. Let's do another print command down here and see what happens when we build this thing. So I'm going to do a, a print command, did receive memory warning. Well, I'm never going to get a print receive memory warning, right? So um, I don't think I want to do that there. What if I just destroy this function? What if I, if I kill this method? Can I do that? Let's try it. So I'll just kill this method. I'll just kill it, and I'll save. Right? So all I have here is my view did load, right? Okay, and let's run this thing afterwards. I'm going to run this now in the simulator. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of press play. So all I've done is I've killed this method. I've put a print statement in, and I'm going to press play, right? Should we be afraid, Tom? Or? No. All right, so here we go. We've got my app that came up, and then look, here's view did load. This is where the output is. Now you can change these output windows, as an example. Like I can expand them, right on the bottom. I don't know if you see that. There's these two little buttons here on the bottom that can expand or contract your output windows. Right, there's that's where they are. So my view did load is right here. Right. Notice how there's other buttons up here. Like one of the things with Xcode that I don't like is there's a lot of hidden stuff all over the place. Like it's like um, it's not like how I, I'm, I'm used to a Visual Studio where you have kind of everything in one place, right? I mean, you have hidden windows in, in Visual Studio that you have to kind of bring up. But here in Xcode, every little, if you see an icon, that means there's hidden functionality. Think of it as a tab as opposed to an icon. It actually does different stuff. So if I hover over something, as an example, this icon, what does it do? It collapses. This brings it up. Um, you know, I can pause execution. This is for my debugging down here, right? I can also expand or contract these windows the way I like them, right? 
Okay, so that's where the editor comes in. I'm going to stop debugging for a second and see what happens. So stop debugging. It's gone. And if you notice, my, my, uh, my simulator stop, uh, stops as well when I stop debugging. It's still in the background running, but it stopped, right? Okay, so view did load print for Swift. It prints out to the console. We're going to use print a lot, right? Because we're going to use print for our debugging, right? We're going to use print to, to debug our, our problems, right? Just like we do console.log or system, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, basically we're printing out for Java. My mind is crazy. System that out the print line and, uh, you know, and so on, right? Uh, console.write line in, in C sharp, thank you. My mind is a blank today. Um, all kinds of other stuff that we do. We always use, you know, print commands, console.log for JavaScript, right? I use a lot of that when I do my, my development. I'm not sure about Rich, uh, how you do it, but I do a lot of console command, console outs, right? I do a lot of that to kind of know what I'm doing, right? So. I tend to use breakpoints and evaluate stuff. Right. Breakpoints. breakpoints are pretty, like, another way definitely to step through stuff. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, debugging and, and uh, error management later on. Okay, cool. So print, print commands, I know we're going slow guys, but bear with me. On the top, notice how we have, so we have one view controller.swift, and on the top we have a bunch of other windows here. One of them is show the standard editor, this one here, which is where we're at right now. If I click this one, right, and this is show the assistant editor, what it's going to do is going to split my editor into two panes. Okay, so why would I want that? Well, sometimes what I want to do is, what if I click on app delegate, right? I can see app delegate in this, in this pane and in this one, right? It's not like it gives me different different editors here, right? But what it does do is it allows me to um, <clears throat> to change my assistant editor so I can look at the same file um, and I can you know move it to the bottom or the right and I can even check uh, change which editor I'm looking at right now, right? But just to know that you can split it up for now. So let's go back. And if I click X on the on the top right corner, it goes away. I can hide and show panes with this one. I'm not going to click this one for uh, this one yet. This is the one we're going to use for our. Um, our version control, which we're going to do in a second. So I can hide this pane, make it larger, uh, bring it back, hide this one, bring it back, hide this one, bring it back. So you can really control your, your space. You can maximize the use of your space. So if you see me shifting things around, I'm usually using some kind of button to do that, to maximize our space uh, for you guys to see things. Remember what I said, everything you click on um, is something that's going to give you some context. So for example this, if I was going to click on my the print statement here, if I hi highlight this, and if I if normally what I would do is get code hinting or some kind of documentation if I click this, the quick help inspector. Um, and it's going to give me um, what this thing does. So here you should get something like this. Inline, here's my quick help for this particular, uh, this particular thing here. Um, it tells me that, do you get it? You don't get it at all? How do you control zoom on this thing? Sorry? How do you zoom in? How do I zoom into what? Are you talking about scroll, like uh, scrolling up the the uh, the text size? The text size? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure what you meant. Yes, command scroll will do it. So if I go scroll in and out, um, but preferences would do it the way. If you want to make it permanent, the preferences is where you do it. Okay, so here let me let's go back to this. So then again, if you have the if you've downloaded the documentation, this is what you're going to get. So if I click on something, um, you're going to get some context sensitive help. So, for example, if you notice here, if I, I've, I've just I'm, I've got the question mark highlighted, right? The question mark is actually quick help inspector for each uh, class or object that I'm looking at. So here's this function you did load. If I click onto there, all of a sudden I get some a quick help of what this thing does, right? Why is this method around? What does it do? And it tells you called after the controller's view is loaded into memory, right? Because like all application uh, development, and by the way, some people might say, well, how come we don't learn Swift first, right? Because we're not really using Swift 100% in this course, right? We're using Swift and we're using the Apple SDK, right, the um, UI kit as an example. So it's kind of a, we're using an API again, right? So even though you, you can learn some Swift and you can see the, the, some, some syntax differences with Swift and what we had before, truly at the end of the day, we're not really f using full Swift here because we're using the API. And, and we have to know the API. And part of the uh, first thing that loads in our API is this view did load. And so we're going to need to know the whole... Um, event uh, loop, if you will, for, uh, uh, for application development. Actually, we did that for people who had me with um, advanced uh, Java. We did a little bit of Android development. And it, had is, it has, Android has its own loop, stuff that happens right away, right? Same thing with iOS. iOS has its own um, uh, event loop, if you will. And each of these functions run in the background, whether you override them or not. 
Okay, so let's take this function away. Let's see what happens if we just kill this view controller so there's nothing in it. Let's get rid of this function too, right? Or this method. We can't get rid of view controller itself. We need this, right? But let's just get rid of the functions and see what happens, right? So now I don't have anything in there. Will it still run, right? So build succeeded. Everything's good, and I still get my device, right? Everything comes, comes up with a bare, kind of a bare minimum thing. So really, if you notice, because those two, those two methods are methods you can override, you don't need them, right? You can decide which of those methods you want to trigger and what you want those methods to do for you. So if you want to wait when view did load to produce a message or populate something on your iOS, uh, on your iOS app, there's different events that we're going to use for that. And we're going, to, we're going to detail that throughout the course, which event to use to do what. Okay? So a little bit of scripting. Okay, what about the main storyboard? We haven't touched that too much. And this is where all the, the fun happens and the pain for all of us developers for iOS. So let's click on this one, main storyboard. Okay, main storyboard. Um, we have a couple things that happen in the main storyboard. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up uh, for you guys so you can see it here. Now, you guys should see what I see, but I'm going to kind of make it so that you can see this main storyboard uh, first. So you guys should see something like this. It almost looks like uh, a view, if you will, of our, I, our, our iOS device, right? Here's our view. Okay. And that's pretty much in a nutshell. It is, uh, and I, um, um, we use storyboards in uh, um, iOS in order for us to create a story, a user story, if you will, um, for when the user accesses our, our, um, our, our app. Each view, consider each view a screen. So if I have a multi-view application, I have a multi-screen application, in iOS, right? Okay, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to drag and drop some stuff from our library. And by the way, remember we talked about this inspector is, is context sensitive. So I click, if I go back to this one, it shows me some details about my, my view that we see here in our storyboard. On the right, notice that there is this area down here, right? And down here we have a, our library of all of our objects, our view objects. So every time we have a view object, I can drag and drop certain pieces, certain view objects onto my view to make them work. There's like, example, it would be similar, similar to us dragging and dropping control, uh, controls in Visual Studio, right? When you're building Visual Studio windows from the right onto the, onto the desktop. So let's try that. So let's kind of go down and let's look for a label like this one, right? So if you kind of, you have to have this icon selected, show the object library, right? And I want to take a label and I want to drag it onto my view, like this. So I'm going to drag it on. Notice how it glows blue. Let me show you that again. So if I take my label and I kind of drag it over here, it glows blue because there's a container, this view controller container that kind of exists here. So here, I'm going to put my label kind of somewhere in the middle, like right here. All right, so here's my label. It's in the middle of my screen. And you know what? Um, when I click on this thing, notice how my label is highlighted, and on the right, I should have a context-sensitive menu about what I can do with my label, yeah? Well, there's different options up here. One is, if I hover over, show the file inspector. I don't want to look at the file inspector. This is the quick help inspector. Here is the identity inspector. Let's click on that. And if you go to the identity inspector, you can see that, you can, that there's different other options here that you get for your label, right? Accessibility and so on. This is the one you really want, though. If you click this one, the attributes inspector in the middle, the one that looks like a little shield. Right? If you click that one, you can actually see that you get um, the text, what kind of text it is. I want you to play around here. I want you to change the text of your label, make it your own. And I want you to try this out, just intuitively. Make this label say, hello world, right? Because this is like our hello world program here, right? So see if you can do that. And there's a couple ways to do that if you try and check this out. So notice how the, if for, for those of you who, are, who don't know what to do, Notice how the text is plain, and underneath the text plain, there's label, and it, it shows label over here. If I change this to hello world, would that change everything? And the answer is yes, but what happens to my label is it's hidden. Because my label right now, what's happening is it, it has a certain shape to it. I have to expand it so that it can hold my, um, you know, kind of my, my, uh, my text here. And I can also choose if it's, my text is centered within the label and so on. So I made my hello world text. Notice how I'm not getting any, any kind of help in terms of where I'm putting this thing. And when I position it, though, in the middle, if I want it to be exactly in the middle, I get this guide. 
So I get this guide, and as I come down, if I want to put it in the exact middle of my screen, I come to the middle point where I get two guides that kind of cross over, like this. There's my hello world. And if I want to make this big, my font, right, as an example, so I want to ch you know, change my font size, I could certainly change that. I can say, well, right now it's my system font, whatever it is. I can change, if I have a collection of fonts I want to use, I can certainly use them here, um, a custom font or whatever. Or I can change my style or my size of my font. So if I want to make this, I don't know, like 30, Notice how it changes right away, press done. And if I expand this, now it's quite big, 30, 30 pixels or 30 point. How is this gonna look on my device though? Right, here's my hello world. I want this hello world to populate on my device. And you know what, I wanna change the color of this thing. Instead of my, my, uh, my color being black, I wanna change my color to something like blue. Well, if you change the, if I choose the color palette right here, I could choose the color that I like. Like, I don't know, if I like more of a darker blue color like this one, I could change my, you know, uh, color to apple blue, this aqua color, right? Yeah? I noticed uh, Apple does not have comic sans. Is it passed? Well, um, <clears throat> it, it, there's, again, you can, you can include any font you want with it. It really depends on what I've loaded in your VM. <laughs> That's a comic sans. You can certainly install that if you want. Go ahead, install it. Okay. All right, so here's my hello world. Hey, let's see how this thing, this thing, will this populate this thing on, online? Will it actually build? Let's see what happens, right? And this is where we get into a lot of fun, and this is where it's a good place to pause after this, so I want to show you what happens, right? Build succeeded, everything's nice, and then it populates, and my hello world is not in the center, it's way over here. How come? So why is that? Why is my hello world all the way the, on the right side? Well, because my storyboard is made to work on any device. And we, Apple can, uh, is, is trying to make it so that it's responsive, right? So I might have different device sizes. Today, my, it's, an, it's an Apple iPhone 6S that we were using, right? Tomorrow, it's going to be something else. Maybe there's going to be a different uh, form factor, a different resolution or whatever, right? So they've made it flexible. And it looks nice. You might think it's a flexible thing to do to, to kind of put, put together this, this system, but it's also auto layout is one of the most challenging things we're going to learn this semester. Um, so let's stop here. I'm not going to talk about what we're going to do here. We did our kind of hello world. Let's stop here. Let's get a, a bit of a break, some coffee. Uh, I'll give my voice a break too. And then we'll come back in 10 or 15 and we'll continue for the, for the next piece. Okay? <laughs> You okay? Hmm? You alright? Gotta get Cardinero over to the church.